My name is Mel V. Some people may know me from my past exploits as a model, TV presenter. Today we're sitting here with the uh, famous DJ Laura. DJs in London. She's one of the best female DJs on the circuit at the moment and I'm chatting to her about what she's been up And fashion stylist. In more recent years, people have come to know me as the voice and creative force behind Freedom Central, a multimedia fringe information platform that deals with subjects and asks questions not normally covered by the mainstream media. Over several years, through my work as an independent investigative journalist, I have helped to portray the story and examine the information of many people with whom I've had the privilege to work. Welcome everybody to the second press conference of the Breakthrough Energy Movement Conference for 2012. Page 254, Dr. Judy Woodward, where did the towers go? Mr. Tutu, will you help the Vatican invoke the policy of criminal solicitanus? <laughs> having investigated some of the biggest stories of our time, and having interviewed some of the most interesting people of our time, what I have recently come to realize is that all that I've gone through has almost been like a training exercise in order to position me to tell the most important story I will ever tell, an almost forgotten story that goes right back to my very own roots. Along with the many great things that happened to us in 2012, we were privileged enough to get to know and work with Reverend Kevin Annett who has, on an international scale, single-handedly exposed the genocide of the native people of Canada by the church-run Indian residential schools under what is referred to in Jesuit documentation as Catholic action. A public international court of justice is hereby convened to consider evidence related to charges of crimes against humanity and criminal conspiracy by institutions of church and state and their fiduciary officers. The crimes that will be documented and judged in our court, they span centuries and range from outright murder to systematic torture, rape, slave labor, germ warfare, medical experimentation, drug testing, involuntary sterilizations, child trafficking, genocide, and wars of extermination against peaceful nations. Through researching the patterns of colonial genocide, by speaking to and collecting information from other researchers in this area all over the world, I came to know and realize that perhaps 
We share the common ancestral history, Kevin, Annette and I, and perhaps now that I understood the subject of colonial genocide better, the time had come to put the record straight about what is happening in South Africa and to expose the evil forces that has caused so much suffering to those who came before me because they are the same forces causing the suffering we see today. There is much misunderstanding internationally, even a lot of confusion within South Africa itself about the Boers, who they were, their story, their struggle and the current genocide of their descendants still living in South Africa. The main reason for this is because history is always written from the point of view of the dominant culture, as are all mainstream and university standard anthropological texts. As Napoleon Bonaparte once said, history is written by the victors, and indeed it is the losers who get written about. And since the Boers lost their battle for freedom against the British at the turn of the 20th century, there has been a century-long international smear and genocide campaign waging against the original white tribe of South Africa. But who were the Boers? Where did they come from? What is their story? And why were they so important that a campaign of genocide was waged against them for over a century? This is the story of my people, the original white tribe of South Africa because I am descended from the last of the Boers.